Like, can you run us through what happened after the game on Sunday? Um, yeah, it was a little, obviously, altercation which the cameras caught, but I'm not sure if, if the, the broadcast footage caught what happened beforehand. I, I wasn't too happy with um, the extra attention that uh, their central defender gave me post the final whistle. So, um, look, it, 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 I saw red a little bit and the tempers flared, but um, I was sensible enough to, to keep my hands down and, and keep, keep uh, the red cards in the referee's pocket. Um, but, yeah, I just wasn't too happy with the, the attempt at, at uh, connecting with me um, post the whistle. Yeah, so that was the whistle when you couldn't quite hear it watching the replay back. Like as you're kicking it, the whistle sort of goes and he gets you on the hand or something like that? Yeah, he just he grazed my hip and my hand. Um, and it was probably, the whistle was actually a few seconds before I went to kick it. That was more of a celeb celebratory kick in the air rather than a, a clearance. And yeah, I just felt it wasn't really necessary. And their coach was, was heated but understood. Um, my reaction after he found out what happened. So, um, look, we, it ended in a little bit of a scurry, uh, scuffle when um, everyone kind of got off the pitch in a hurry, but um, all is well that ends well. So. It's happened a few times now. What's been going on? Yeah, look, I think, I think the, the nature of the games we've played over the last few weeks, uh, last month or so, have, have been really closely contested um, matches and, and finished with a lot of fire. Um, you know, if you think back to the Sydney game and, and the Brisbane game as well, came down to the wire and then, and then the weekend. So everyone's emotions are running high. And look, I'm pleased to see the boys getting in, in behind each other and, and sticking up for each other. Because at the end of the day, um, if there was instances where these, these things were happening and there was no provocation or, or, or no need for it, then it would be an issue that we, we would have to address. But I think, um, you know, when the boys are standing up for each other, I don't, I don't really have an issue with that. Yeah, because you've been in the centre of it a couple of times now. Um, you're getting a bit of a reputation, a bit of a hot head. Hopefully not. <laughs> Hopefully I don't receive any letters in the post from the A-League or something telling me to calm it down. But look, yeah, I've always been someone who plays with my heart on my sleeve. And I think, um, you know, I think back to the Ernie Merrick days and he kind of encouraged me to do that, being a younger keeper, um, to, to stamp my mark and make sure that nobody, um, nobody uh, takes the, the mickey out of us. And I think probably... It nurtured from when I was playing for the reserve team as one of the only players over the age of like 20 um, playing in a men's competition. Our younger side used to get physically taken advantage of a lot. And um, Ernie always encouraged us senior players when we were dropping down to, to take the brunt of that and, and make sure that um, our team was safe and, and get around our boys. So I guess I probably just carried it on, but potentially Ernie's the one to blame in these, probably loving seeing it to be honest. <laughs> but no, nah, look, it's, um, it's not something I go out to intend to do every week. Um, but yeah, if, if, the, if the moment is there and someone needs to be looked after, then uh, I'll probably do that. Yeah, because have got a few wins on the, on the bounce now. Um, is it something though that the team needs to stamp out or sort of address this week, or you know, you just play it down to the emotion of it again? Uh, yeah, like I said, I mean, if the, if the instances were where there was no provocation and, and we were stepping out of line and it was getting to the point of we're winning games and it was post-match and it was arrogance or, or getting or taunting or anything like that, then I'd have an issue with it. But I don't think it's something we need to address. I mean, if, if it's creating the reputation that no one wants to come here and play us because we're a scary bunch, then great. That adds to it. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's fine with me. And with, so with Marcelo earlier in the season, uh, I think I heard you on Sky, you're saying he just refused to shake the team's hand after the game and at some point he's put you in a, a headlock. Yeah, that, that was slightly different because it started from a calm scenario where I just said, look, mate, it's been a great contest, shake everybody's hand, and he, he took took offence to that, I guess, and, and it, it just, yeah, that was a little bit more calm, although it probably didn't look it. I was pretty chilled at that point, I felt, maybe as opposed to the weekend. Um, do you think, because you guys are doing so well, teams are trying to get in your face a bit more, because it's not like you guys are starting these confrontations, right? There's absolutely, there's, there's every possibility that's the case. I mean, um, we are the most fouled team in the competition. So I guess uh, there's frustration from opposition when we keep the ball for lar large periods of time or, or as we've seen in the last few weeks where we tend to kill the game off um, when we have, a, have an advantage and, and, and just suck up all the pressure and absorb everything for the last few minutes. I've been on the other end of that. That is extremely frustrating. 
But having said that, I don't think there's any malicious intent or anything from opposition players. I've, like I said, I've been in that position and it is extremely frustrating. So um, with the exception of the instance on the weekend where he tried to kick me, I, I, I haven't had an issue with anything. But has that been spoken about internally, about raising the intensity a little bit more? And, and that's kind of coincided with your rise and fall as well? Yeah, look, I mean, we always touch on the fact that we're, we're the most fouled team in the competition. Um, I guess it's the nature of the way we play. Um, through the lines a lot of the time it's congested areas and and we've got some very creative players on the ball who who opposition players feel they I guess can't quite get near unless they're a little bit more physical but um, the only thing that we've mentioned is, is is to look after each other and and make sure that we're not being disrespected I mean I reflect back to the Western Sydney incident where the boss brought it up the next week and he was he was proud of our boys for for getting around each other because we don't want to be disrespected and at the end of the day my favourite bit about sport is is having a, a big slog for 90 minutes against other blokes and then you shake hands and have a beer or something after the game. That's For me, that's the best bit about it. So, um, yeah, the handshake at the end of the game is important to me. So that was um, the only instance where the boss encouraged is that, that sort of behaviour. Is that the Aussies play? <laughs> Look, the Aussies are a fiery bunch and it's, it's something that, you know, I've got a lot of Australian in me and, and that side of sport, Australian sport, I've loved. Um, growing up watching the cricket team, um, you know, some people might call them horrible to play against, but I, I enjoy it. I think it's part of gamesmanship. As long as you don't cross the line and it's not personal, as long as it's to do with the game, then uh, I'm pretty comfortable with it and, and I'll encourage it against me too. Like I've, I've played against some, some players in the A-League who give it just as good back to me and, and that makes the contest even better for me. Um, it certainly switches me on and, and kind of drags me into the contest even more. So. I enjoy it. Were you um, aware of Danny Vukovic charging up to join the attack in the 93rd minute or whatever it was? I tell you what, when he arrived at the back post with that looping ball that Lucas did very well to deal with, that caught me by surprise. I, I've obviously had it a lot before in set piece time, but not in open play. But then again, um, knowing Vuk's character, it doesn't surprise me in the slightest. And you know, he's, he's doing well there on a roll and the, the game was, I guess, there to be stolen. Uh, or a point was there to be stolen for them, so they were throwing numbers forward, and yeah, I love it from them. <laughs> Alex Roof of Gold, do you ever think you'd see the day? Oh, mate, um, I hope they got that statue up in Palmy in time for our arrival this week. <laughs> I'll shine it after that. So, no, it was, uh, it was amazing. It actually took me a few seconds to register that it was him. Um, obviously, set piece time, I knew he was in the mix, but couldn't quite see from my angle, and I took off as soon as I saw him, and so proud of him. He. You know, we, we, we were wind, we've been winding him up for years and he's always played it down. And funnily enough, we were at the beach um, earlier that week and my family was giving him stick about not scoring and he was playing it down saying, oh, I don't care anymore. But I think that reaction showed that he, he certainly does. And no, I was, I was so excited for him and we had a beer after the game to celebrate. So it was wicked. Have you played a game in Parney before? I have. Uh, we played a pre-season game there under Mark Rudin, I believe, against Hawke's Bay or Napier City, one of the two. Um, so, but I don't know what the, the stadium looks like these days. I haven't been there in a long time, so it should be interesting. I think it's still the speedway track. I, I have heard there was a demolition derby on there a few weeks ago, so I'm hoping the pitch is up to scratch. <laughs> you guys have got to second this weekend. I guess, how do you now maintain that and maintain staying in a playoff position? That's the focus for us. Um, it's difficult to get to the position we've got to, but it's even harder to stay there. And what impresses me about this bunch is they continue to grow each week. Each win has been slightly different in its own right, even though the games have ended in similar fashion with us holding on to a one, one goal advantage. But they've, they've been very different and that's, that's the key. We have to be able to adapt. Um, you know, we've, I think we've got quite a good record this year of beating the teams above us. But now, obviously, we are the teams up, the, we are the team up, the, up near the top. So we have to focus on, on keeping a buffer between us and the teams below us and also chasing down the leaders of the pack and I think the way to do that is is to play with confidence. Um, you, don't, you don't want to cross the line and, and get to arrogance but I think we should be playing like we're the best team on the park every week. Um, that's when we play our best football. Um, I think the first half on the weekend demonstrated that we knew Central Coast is a fantastic side, they're flying, they're still above us at the moment but I think we knew at home if we played the way, if we were able to dictate the game and, and play the way we want to play then no team can touch us and we've seen that in halves uh, and, and in spells even against the likes of Melbourne City where we've been fantastic. So when we get it right, um, 
there's not many teams that can cope with it. So that's the aim to go out there and play with confidence and freedom, but also play like we're the best players out there. How much of a loss will Clayton be? He's going to find out soon. Um, how long is he out for? Yeah, look, Clay's a wonderful player. Um, and I think we saw at the back end of last season um, how difficult it was without him. Fortunately, this year um, we, we've brought in um, Steve Ugarkovic, which adds to the the quality that we've got in the six, sixes department. Um, when you you know him and Nico there um, waiting in the wings to to fill that void. So, yeah, Clay's a big loss, and he's obviously got a wand of a left foot, and he, he's quite creative. But Stevie's got a, a heck of an engine on him, um, equally as as good in terms of creating things, and and he'll come in and do a great job. So I don't think we lose too much in, in that department. Um, but yeah, I'm wishing Clay a speedy recovery. Yeah, because last season you saw Sandoval play as a six. Do you feel like yeah, you just better better place now to throw a midfield injury? Absolutely. I think um, you know if he if he probably. Uh, learnt from what transpired last season and, and realised that that's an area that we need to bolster for exactly this reason. Um, and Stevie's a, a frustrated figure because he's, he's on the bench at the moment, so he'll be extremely hungry and um, I'm really hoping he, he excels. Tell us about Perth Glory, um, good win for them uh, last time and uh, David Williams, former teammate. Yeah, I love Willow, uh, champion bloke, one of the best uh, blokes I've met uh, going around in football. And, He's a top top quality player. He's he's picked up where he left off in terms of um, his effect in the A League. Um, Perth are a, a quality side that they're quite similar to Brisbane in the way they play uh, with their back five and, and being quite hard to break down because they they're very structured with their back five. But um, they're, they're also really lethal on the counter attack with the quality they've got up front. And obviously they've added the likes of Adam Taggart who <laughs> made an instant impact and. Um, I think looking back on it, that point that we picked up in Perth has, has turned out to be a really good one. It's a, it's a difficult place to go, Macedonia Park, and other teams are struggling to go there. So hopefully, um, you know, with them having to make that travel, um, they'll be a little bit fatigued and, and we can capitalise. But yeah, they're a quality side who are flying high and they're only three points behind us as well. So it's a, it's a big game um, in terms of where, where it can put us on the table and, and keep them a little bit further down. But um, we probably didn't create enough chances against them last time. Um, I think the one time we played out through our system, we created the goal. Um, so if we can execute that on more occasions, we'll certainly create a lot more chances. But we were pretty resolute defensively last time, so hoping for more of that. And uh, speaking of uh, former teammates, who's the one uh, former Phoenix player who you despise scoring against you the most? Oh, I'm not sure. Who scores against me? A lot of players at the moment. Yeah, um, yeah Willow obviously nicked one in the last game. Um, it was a very tidy finish. Um, who else have we got out there? Not too many. McGarry? McGarry? Oh yeah, yeah that, that one hurt. That did hurt. <laughs> Especially with his right pig. Oh, I haven't seen that move in three years that I've played with him. Um, but yeah, no, that was a tidy finish and yeah, that hurt a little bit. But good on Jimmy, he's back playing again. So hopefully he bangs more and just not against me. <laughs>